my name is Aisha Kamashong. I'm a dancer, teacher, choreographer, and creative director. And in studio with me, I have Chuse, who's gonna act as my demonstrator. So in today's session, I'm gonna be briefly discussing modern dance and modern dance techniques. Now, modern dance began as a rejection of and a rebellion against the rigid constraints of classical ballet. Those first modern dance pioneers of the early 20th century made it a point to shed the classical ballet technique, shed the classical ballet costuming, and shed the classical ballet shoes. And instead, what they practiced was known as free dance. Additionally, instead of focusing on themes which surrounded fantasy and fairy tales, which classical ballet was known for, modern dance was welcomed as a form of dance which responded to modern concerns. And it was viewed as a true expression of contemporary life. That is, it was vital, it was alive, and it was constantly changing. Um, it is very important to note that at the core of modern dance were the concepts of rebellion, self-expression, and improvisation. And for this reason, modern dance has always been open to change, inclusion, and innovation. Because of the nature of its birth, modern dance didn't have any acknowledged catalog body of movement for these dancers to draw from. So instead, the pioneer dancers had to explore, create, and develop their own dance vocabulary. And in each case, the result was the development of a unique and original dance language which suited the individual's creative needs. Therefore, those who have made a strong impact and who have greatly influenced the art form, as well as those who continue to stay true to the core concepts of modern dance, have found new ways of making movement aesthetically meaningful and have created distinctive styles of dance as a result. Speaking of those who have greatly influenced the art form, we must acknowledge some of those early modern dance pioneers who have created movement and technique languages that have truly stood the test of time, such as Martha Grimm, whose innovative and iconic style was developed from experimenting with the concepts of contract and release, and thus developed a theory of movement based on these actions. Graham, alongside her company, certainly broadened the contemporary dance world's vocabulary of movement. And in fact, she's been credited as one of the few individuals who has managed to create new and original forms and ways of movement. Lester Horton. Horton technique is based entirely on corrective exercises created with a knowledge of human anatomy. It is a technique that prepares a dancer for any type of dancing he may wish to follow. The technique emphasizes a whole body anatomical approach to dance that includes flexibility, strength, coordination, and body and spatial awareness to enable unrestricted dramatic freedom of expression. Merce Cunningham. The Cunningham technique develops clarity through both spine and leg work. The torso and legs are used either in coordination or opposition to one another. Spatial awareness is gained by implementing multiple changes of direction within a single phrase, suggesting that any point in space can be the dancer's front. Jose Lemon. The Lemon technique is based on principles of weight, that is, fall and recovery, and it focuses on the movement of breath through the body and the fluid succession of one movement into the next. Now, based on the descriptions given of these techniques, 
it is evident that the underlying principles that these techniques are built on are all different. And therefore, the techniques must look different. And in fact, it's, it is important for a technique to be able to be recognized. In fact, any technique must have its own signature or look, which makes it easily distinguishable from others. For instance, it is felt that three signature moves define the Graham technique. We have the contraction, we have the release, and we have a spiral. And when one hears terms such as stag, flat back, or table used within a dance space, immediately one knows that the Horton technique by Lester Horton is being used within that space. To give you a visual representation of what I mean, Tuesday is going to demonstrate a classical ballet technique phrase, a Horton technique phrase, and a Graham technique phrase, so that we can observe and see where each of these techniques are distinguishable from the other. Classical ballet emphasizes fluid, graceful movements, and long lines, along with a strict adherence to correct form and technique, especially the turnout of the legs. The turnout starts from the hips, it comes down to the knees, down to the ankles, and it culminates at the feet. Now Tuesday is about to give us a nice long forward bend. As she recovers, we get ready to see her do a graceful back bend. Nice long arms as she comes back to center to finish in Brava. In the Horton technique, every muscle of the body is lengthened and each section of the body is isolated. In this flat back forward, as you can see, Tuesday stands with her feet in parallel second. Her torso tilts forward at a right angle 90 degrees. The buttocks, pals, and heels are in a straight line. And her arms go from a natural low to a high parallel. The flat back, back bend, Tuesday stands with her feet in a second position parallel as she presses her pelvis diagonally forward. The torso tilts diagonally backward and the arms are in a high parallel. Now where the Horton technique is very linear with long lines, the Grimm technique is based on opposition between contraction and release and the shifting of weight as well as spirals. Now Tuesday is going to perform a short improvisation combining classical ballet, Horton technique, and Graham technique. As you can see, modern dance gives you the freedom to experiment, improvise, and combine these varying movements from varying schools of dance thought and just bring them all together. Today, modern dance continues to emphasize and showcase the artistic expression of the individual performer and or choreographer. And similar to any contemporary movement, it has developed over time due to shifts and changes in thoughts and approach. It is undeniable that the impact that modern dance has had has been widespread. And it would be remiss of me not to mention that it also had a major impact on dance in the Caribbean. In fact, modern dance's emphasis on rebellion, self-expression, and improvisation actually made it the perfect ground upon which forms of Caribbean modern dance techniques could be created and explored. And it is my pleasure to assert that we have four identifiable Caribbean modern dance techniques. We have La Tecnica Cubana, and the Rivero Technique from Cuba, we have Lantec in Jamaica and Technica from Guadeloupe. And so we have come to the end of this session. I wish you all the best and good luck. <laughs>